We've gotten to an exciting part of um, my painting process. We put on the colored gesso, the first layer of paint, another layer of paint, keeping our minds on complementary colors and how they may show through at the final phases. And this is one of the final phases. This is when I sand to see what, what have we done here. So I'll just use, when I'm sitting in my studio working on smaller pieces, I use sandpaper and I cut it up into little squares. And I like to use a medium grade grain um, to really dig in there and get the color up. When I'm working on my much bigger canvases, I use a power sander, which has just become one of my favorite tools. And when I use that, um, in order to prevent inhaling in those paints, I'll wear a face mask and wear earplugs and try to do it out in my garage with the door open. But when I'm just sitting in my studio using this, I, um, I don't wear any of that stuff. All right, so I'm going to start sanding. And you're going to see, hopefully, oh, how the, um, the green starts to come through the red. And that's when these paintings really start to come to life for me. And you can see um, the brush strokes where the paint went on thicker. That's where the molding paste really comes in handy because you get that thickness. Okay, so I'm really happy with that. Let's see what happens when I go sand over the yellow orange. Look at right away that blue starts to come through. So there's a lot of aspects of um, my process of painting that I don't have control over, but um, which is just exactly how the sanding is going to turn out. But I can predict it enough. If I was in control of every part of my painting, that would not be any fun for me. I mean, right now that it turned out like that, I just love. I see real potential in this painting. You're almost there. All right, let's try this one. I used a more um, monochromatic, you know, topic, and I have no idea what's under there. I'm going to guess it's orangish yellows. Let's see. Oh, look, a red under there. Yeah, like a light cadmium red. And some blue, what's that coming from? I wonder if the blue was the, um, yeah, I put on a really thick gesso. So there, there's something unexpected. Not sure how I feel about that, but I'm going to keep working with it until I like it, love it. I really do like the yellows coming through the periwinkle there and that red coming through the teal. And look, I like this orange. So you see what I mean by when I say that these small pieces really allow me to um, experiment and figure out what I like so that when I go to do my big huge paintings, I will have my small paintings sitting in front of me for inspiration and direction. So I'll remember that I really like the um, cadmium yellow coming through this. This looks like a Payne's gray. Let's keep sanding this one and see what happens. To me, that, that blue underneath just makes it a little um, too busy, but I have ways to bring the, these paintings like this around. So this is all yellow. What's under there? I did a little experimenting with the molding paste and you'll see I did an abstract bird under here with the molding paste and a darker blue and you'll see that come through if all goes well. And then this is one of those leftover paint paintings. I would just glob some on under the, as my first coat.
There's a little bits of green under there. I'm really liking the green under the yellows. Does the green have its complement in a red? Yes. That was the gesso color. So you can, you see, you can build up the um, molding paste to form objects underneath and to really give your paintings a lot of texture. I like this. I like the little hints of um, teal coming through the yellow there and up here, the green coming through. Is it done? No. Is it almost done? Yes. Okay. We'll do this last one. Let's, I left hints of the green underneath. I thought that might be interesting. Oh, I, I look at that, how you can see I left, I did these horizontal breast strokes. I love seeing the human hand in paintings, and I love seeing uh, when artists leave themselves and their process behind, they leave proof. So to me, that reveals that, the art, that I, me, the artist, left behind proof that I did this with my human hand and made a choice about it. I could have smoothed it out. I just love seeing um, decision-making in paintings. Okay, so this right here is really starting to excite me. This blue under that yellow. Does anybody else feel like this? <laughs> it doesn't matter, does it? I like doing it. Let's see what comes out of here. So this is a painting right here where I didn't really restrain myself much with color. I've got about all of them going on. And that's where my final phase helps sort of mellow out all this color. I'm going to go back in and add a black and white object. It may be my trademark bird, vase of flowers. I might just even keep it abstract and do black and white on this patch. See, this patch allows for an extra dose of magic and possibilities. So I like the patch because it does give possibilities to do something a little different. And I don't have to. This one doesn't have a patch, so I look for, I'll probably add a little bit um, of color on top of it, little blotches of color. All right, so we sanded it, we're ready to, um, Finish up the paint.